Everybody's wrong. Rewrote the song. Thoughts become action. Tell me what's happening. Wish your mind wrapped in a wrap. Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create this acrylic sort of paint effect for your lettering work within Adobe Photoshop, so let's just get straight into it. So first things first, you're going to need some lettering work to work with, and I've just got some type that I've made um, just as practice, so it's just as hipster. And for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to do the H, so we're not doing the full thing because that take quite a while. And you can see what I've done here, that I've actually got all these on separate layers, so the reason for this is because I'm going to export this H into Photoshop, well, I'm going to export it as a PSD. And because these are all on separate layers, when it goes into Photoshop, these will still be on separate layers, which just means that when it comes to adding shadows and stuff, um, like where they overlap each other, that would just be much easier to do in Photoshop, and it'll be a lot easier as well, because you can paint all of these as separate layers then. So, as I said, we're just going to be doing the letter H, so I'm just going to delete the rest of these characters. So now we're left with just letter H. I'm just going to center that and make it larger. So now I'm going to come up to File, Export, export as and then this will probably be on PNG by default so you're just going to scroll down until you find Photoshop and then brackets PSD hit that I'm just going to save mine as HPSD and I've already got one because I did it previously so I'm just going to hit export over that one replace and then when this opens you want it where it says options flat image you want to make sure you've got right layers ticked and this will just make it so that you can actually um, edit individual layers so I'm just hit OK let that export and once that's exported, all you're going to do is come to the directory where you've saved it to, double click it so it opens it in Photoshop, and you'll see that you've now got it all on separate layers, so you can see I can turn each separate part off. So what we're now going to do is we're going to drag this into a document which we've already made. So this, this one is 3000 by 3000 pixels uh, at 300 dpi. So I'm just going to drag all of these into here so we can make sure we've got it at a fairly decent size, because it's probably quite big here. Yeah. So let me just scale this down a little bit. Right, so now we've got the letter H in here, and what I'm first going to do is I'm just going to take off some of this because it's not going to be connecting to another letter anymore, so we don't actually need this long tail. And it doesn't matter if this looks quite rough at the end anyway because it's going to be turned into a brush stroke at the end, so this, like how this is messy here, it doesn't necessarily matter that much. So the next stage is now turning this into a sort of brush stroke, and to do this, you're going to need a fairly colourful image. So I personally used an image of the nebula, and I recommend using that if not I'll just fine and the next stage of this is to add some color and to do this you're gonna need a fairly colorful image and I'm personally using a image of the nebula because it's obviously quite colorful so I'm just gonna drag this in and I'm actually gonna scale this up quite a bit so it covers the whole letter and just paste that there I'm just gonna drag it over a little bit and what I'm then gonna do is I'm gonna create a new layer on top of this and then what you want to do is you're going to come over to the brush tool on the left or be on the keyboard and then you're just going to click and hold and you'll see that there's a tool here called mixer brush tool so you just want to select this tool and then at the top here where it says sample all layers you want to make sure this is ticked and you want to put the wetness the load mix and flow all of these want to be at 100 percent so make sure you got those 100 percent and i have this unticked and this one ticked i'm not entirely sure what those do but i'll just keep them as they are and then the actual brush that we're going to use so i think everybody should have these so if you come to this i'm just going to reset the brushes so it's all the default brushes and then on the scroll here if you come down to the very bottom there'd be one that's like a circle shape like this it's, uh, the size is by default 100 and this is the brush that we're going to be using so now we can actually start to paint the letters and to do this we're going to on our new layer that we've got you want to make sure you're holding command if you're on mac or control if you're on pc and click on the thumbnail of the first letter the first like part of the letter and you'll see that it now selects this area but you'll see that you're actually still on your new layer and because you have this sample all layers when you use this brush on here it's going to sample the nebula picture and it's going to create it onto a new layer in this brush stroke sort of effect so all i'm going to do is make the brush a tiny bit bigger by using these square bracket keys and all you're going to do is literally click and drag and you'll see it starts to create this nice sort of brush stroke so all you're going to do is basically make sure you fill up the whole area and obviously drag from uh, down to up and up to down to mix the colors so like there I want to mix the orange in a little bit more so I'm just going to drag that up a little bit and then drag it back down and you just want to get a nice mix of colors and of course you don't have to use this specific image you might have a, um, an image with a variety of different colors in it I mean I'm using an image that's got um, a limited amount of colors but they all work very well together so that's why I'm using this one so 
again this is just um, a matter of experimentation and playing around with it until you're happy with how it looks and it's nice when you mix colors you see you get like this sort of stroke effect and that looks quite nice and we're going to make this sharper later as well so these uh, will stand out a lot more and have a lot more definition to them okay so i'm happy with how the first letter's looking and i'm just going to turn all the original ones off so you don't actually need to see those and I'm just going to turn off the background layer by hitting the eye, eye, eye icon here. And you can see that I've actually missed some up here and down here. So I'm just going to turn the nebula back on. And I'm just going to make sure that we get all of this. And then there was a tiny bit at the bottom here. Right, so we'll turn that off and check again. And that looks pretty good. So now you can deselect it by doing Command D or Control D if you're on PC. And then you're just going to create a new layer. And you're just going to repeat this step for these next two. So Again, holding command or control and then click on the thumbnail of the next piece. Make sure you have a new layer. You want to turn the nebula back on. And just repeat the process of what you've just done. So again, you're just dragging this from both sides to try and get a nice blend of colours. And I think I'm quite happy with that. I want to bring this white over a little bit more. So I'm happy with how that looks. So again, deselect command D or control D if you're on PC. And lastly, a new layer and we'll do it on the final piece. And just as we've done before, just click and drag. And once you get to a curve like this, you'll see that if I actually bring it around like so, it kind of creates a bit of a 3D effect. So if I just did it a little bit more so you can see what I'm talking about. You can see how it kind of look, looks like it bends around on itself. So you can kind of experiment with that. And you want to make sure that you actually get the curve nice like this. So of course if you're using a graphics tablet this will probably be much easier but I'm just using a mouse at, this, at the moment so it's quite difficult to get a nice smooth curve but I'm doing my best. So yeah of course like when you're actually doing this you'll want to take a lot more time to perfect it but I'm just uh, trying to do this fairly quick for the sake of this tutorial. So I'm pretty happy with that, that looks pretty cool. And now we can deselect and now we can turn off the nebula background. So now you can see we've got like they're all fairly close to each other I mean you can tell the separate layers but the colors are all fairly close so that's kind of what you want to go for so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to change the ends of the letters into like brush strokes and to do this we want to come up to where it says wet and 100% we're going to drop this down to about 30 yeah 33 that'll do and I'm just going to click on to the first one again and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all these and hit command J or control J if you're on PC and that'll just duplicate all the layers and I'm just going to turn all these ones off so I just want to make sure I've got a backup of the uh, originals so now we have these and I'm just going to get the brush tool again and make sure you have this set to 33 and what you also want to do is where it says sample all layers you need to make sure this is unticked because if this is ticked I'll show you what will happen so if I do this now if I turn off the background layer you'll see that it's actually mixed it with the white because it's sampling all the layers so obviously you don't want that to happen so you're going to untick sample all layers and now when you do it like this if you turn off the background layer you'll see that it's actually completely by itself so what you can do is just basically click and drag until you're happy with how it looks and then i'm going to come down to the bottom and do the same and obviously you want to follow the direction of the line so it looks right so it doesn't look weird and once you've got the ends of the strokes looking how you want them what i like to do is just literally click and hold and just drag down the outline of the um, stroke and that just makes it because it's quite a sharp edge because it was a vector this just kind of roughens it up a little bit and gives it more of that brush kind of feel so i'm just gonna do it to both sides here and then we're going to come over to the middle piece and just do the same with this so i'll probably speed this part up because it's fairly straightforward what you have to do here Okay, so now that we've got the strokes finished, we can now move on to adding some shadows and we're going to adjust the colours a little bit later and make them a little bit little bit brighter and obviously make the um, acrylic sort of paint effect a bit more obvious. But first we're going to add the shadows so that we can uh, get all the actual letter finished and then we can adjust all the colours and the effect. So to add the shadows to this, what I'm going to do is, so the first shadow is basically going to be underneath this line that crosses over. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to duplicate that middle line. So you can see that this layer is now here. I've now got two of these. And with the background color as black or dark gray, whichever one you want, I'm just going to hold on the bottom one, sorry. So make sure you've got the one underneath. And you're just going to hold command and click on the thumbnail like you did before so it selects it. I'm just going to hit command backspace. And that'll basically just fill that layer with black. So if I turn off the top one, you'll see that there's now a black one underneath it. And all we're going to do with this is come up to filter, blur, 
Gaussian blur. And I'm going to drop this down quite a bit. About 37.4 that looks quite well. So I'll hit OK. And once you've hit OK on that, what you're going to do is you're going to hold Command and click on the thumbnail of this long one. So like this. So it now selects this area. In fact, you make sure you do it on the paint one. Yep. And then what we're going to do is come up to Select, Inverse, and then hit Backspace. And now you see it deletes all the shadows that were outside of this layer. So now we've got just the shadows underneath there. So now you can see if I turn it off. So you can see the difference that it makes. And then we're just going to do the same again, but with this one. So we're going to have to duplicate the top layer. And then obviously the second one down. Select it, Command Backspace, Deselect, and then come up to Filter. And then we can just add it because we've already done the Gaussian Blur. If you come up to Filter, it should be at the top here. So just hit that and it will apply the exact same effect that we've just used. And then you're just going to hold Command and click on the middle one. Select, Inverse, and then Backspace to delete. And then Deselect. So now you've got your shadows sorted. We can now focus on adjusting the colors and creating the a bit more of a strong effect on it. So again, like we did before, I'm just going to duplicate all these and then turn these ones off. And I'm actually going to merge these ones together just so we can apply all the effects to one single piece instead of doing it to several different layers. So the first thing I'm going to do is come up to Image, Adjustment, and then down to Vibrance. I'm going to bump this maybe all the way to the top. We'll see how much it works. So maybe not all the way to the top, maybe like there. That looks okay to me. And then we're also going to come up to filter, sharpen, and then sharpen. And then again, filter, sharpen, and then sharpen more. And this is just to give it a bit more of definition and then to ultimately make it look like um, acrylic paint. What I tend to do is come to filter, stylize, then come down to oil paint. And these were the settings that I was using on a larger piece. So we're actually gonna bump these down. So scale, I'm gonna bring that straight down to the bottom. Let's see how that looks. I think that looks much better. So I'm just going to hit OK with that. I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. And you can adjust the settings more so that like you can play with the lighting. So like that. But I don't want it to stand out too much. So I'm just going to drop this down a little bit actually. So maybe about 1.6. Yeah, I think that looks good. So hit OK. So now you can see it has gives it kind of that texture. It kind of looks like acrylic paint once it's dried. And now we're just going to try and adjust the colors and make them a little bit brighter. So I'm just going to duplicate this by using Command J or Control J if you're on PC. Turn off the original. And come up to image adjustments and then color look up and I'm just gonna like scroll through all these and see which ones works best So I'll speed this part up But you just basically want to go through these and see which ones kind of gives it a nicer effect And if you want to see what it looks like before and after you can just hit the preview button here So yeah, I'll just go through these until I find one that I think I'm happy with Okay, so I've chosen to go with crisp warm look and that's just because it just kind of makes the colors stand out and a bit more vibrant And a tiny bit more contrasted too. So I'm just gonna hit okay on that and that's pretty much it. I mean, you could add one last effect to it, which I've done before, so it kind of makes it like it's sat on a canvas. And to do that, I just basically went to Filter, um, Filter Gallery. And then on Texture at the bottom, you'll see that there's one called Texturize. And it just gives it, like, and then it says Texture here, so you can select what kind of texture you want. And I've got Canvas ticked. So then you can obviously change the scaling um, and the relief. I'm not entirely sure what those do. But you could just brings the um, canvas sort of texture for a little bit more and gives it that more of a pain feel. And yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. So that's how I create this paint effect within Adobe Photoshop. And of course, if you've got any ideas for any other tutorials or any suggestions, then leave them in the comments down below. And as always, if you use my tutorial for anything, I'd love to see what you create with it. So feel free to tag me on social media. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.